Hi guys, today we're going to do something a little bit fun. We're going to look at the portrayal of the Piat in various video games. We'll look at the size, shape and physical characteristics of the models, how they function in the game, and the animations and sound effects of them in action. I've only had the chance to play a handful of these games myself, so I can't comment too much on how accurately the Piat's effectiveness is depicted in each of the games. Many thanks to Tigerfield for letting me use some of his footage to rate these Piats. So first things first, we need a rating system. We'll rate the Piats out of five Piat bombs. One being the lowest, five being the highest. Okay, let's start with Medal of Honor Allied Assault from 2002. This is definitely the worst first person shooter representation of the Piat but props to them for including it in the first place. It's essentially a green tube, and we only see the front sight, and it has a front pistol grip rather than a monopod. Okay, the recoil and sound effects aren't awful for when it was made, but the reloading animation really is terrible. Loading the bomb down the tray like a mortar rather than putting the nose of the bomb under the ring of the bomb tray and tilting it down into position. So this would mean that the bomb would just slide out of the tray because its loading clip at the rear of the bomb hasn't been slipped into the projectile guides. So kudos for them for including it in the game, but it has to be one Piat bomb out of five. Next up we have the massively improved model from 2007's Forgotten Hope, really showing how far game engines progressed in five years. For a game from 2007 this is a surprisingly accurate model. The paint is probably slightly too green, but we do have the white indirect fire aiming line painted along the top of the Piat. This model also has the correct monopod, sight assemblies, the rear quadrant sight, and you can even see the monopod's wing nut. The loading animation is spot on with the bomb being loaded nose first into the bomb tray. Another cool extra element is we get to see the player flip up the rear sight. We see it has the correct three apertures seen on the later mark of rear sight but the problem is the sight markings are in the wrong order, going 110, 80, 50 yards, rather than 50, 80, 110 yards, with 110 yards at the top. The animation also doesn't show the front sight being flipped up. The bomb is shown as being black rather than a greeny brown, only in a handling practice bombs were painted black, and that's probably what the model had for reference. The recoil isn't bad, and the firing effect has a slightly overly metallic ring. All in all, not bad, a good if flawed effort, so 3 Piat Bombs out of 5. With 2008's Darkest Hour Europe 4445, we take a bit of a step back. We have a pretty simple model, but we do have a 3 aperture rear sight, a front sight and the white aiming line. There's a satisfying little boom sound when fired, and a not too over the top explosion downrange. The loading animation is basically a complete cop-out though, and we don't really see the character loading the weapon at all. But from the sound effects and the heavy breathing of what sounds like a cork being pulled out of a wine bottle, I think they're hinting at the Piat's infamous manual recocking. The character is also seen going prone before firing too, which is certainly accurate. We'll be generous and say two bombs out of five. Next up from 2011, we have Dino D-Day a Half-Life 2 mod where the Nazis have dinosaurs for some reason. Anyway, as you'd expect, it's not the most accurate depiction, but it isn't awful. The Piat and the bomb are a brownish color and the bomb having a yellow and blue marking stripe. And it's the only game to depict the TNT marking on the blue stripe. It reads TNT 12. In reality, the Mark 3 bomb would have been marked TNT 2. The Piat's blockier than in reality, with chunky sight assemblies. It has no aiming line and the rear sight, which is an early two aperture, which in reality had apertures for 70 and 100 yards, is never used. Instead, it just flops about. On the actual weapon, there's a flat spring which holds the sight in tension, stopping it from flopping around. And interestingly, the monopod attachment wing nut is on the opposite side to most game depictions of the Piat. The worst thing about Dino D-Day's depiction of the Piat is its loading and firing animations. For some reason, the bomb has a primer projecting out the back of it, 
and the character flips the bomb with a flourish every time they reload. The recoil is minimal and the sound effect seems to have been taken from a M79 grenade launcher. And the effect of the bomb going down range looks like it's taken from a, a generic rocket launcher. So for this one I'm going to say two P out bombs out of five, might be a little bit generous, but that's mainly for the novelty of the two aperture rear sight and the effort on the bomb markings. Next up we have Red Orchestra 2, Heroes of the West from 2016. Pretty good representation of the loading of the bomb. The colour of the Piat is good and it has the white aiming line and a three aperture rear sight but no markings on this model. The bomb is the right colour and it has a red ring around the nose suggesting it's a Mark II or IV. The blast sound effect isn't bad and the firing animation isn't too bad either although the recoil looks a little bit light. So for this one, three bombs out of five. Now we're getting into some of the more recent depictions of the Piat in games with 2017's Day of Infamy. It's a little low on the texturing and detail side of things and the bomb again appears to be black rather than a similar colour to the Piat itself. And the loading animation shows the bomb being jammed backwards rather than being slotted into the projectile guides. I do like how the sling loop on the right side wiggles when the Piat is fired though. The rear sight has the three apertures but no markings. And there's a more metallic sound when the Piat is fired, which isn't bad. The loading animation is also fairly decent. So, three bombs out of five, but I might be being a little bit generous there. Excuse this brief interruption guys, I just wanted to ask you to make sure you're subscribed to the channel and that you've hit the notification bell to make sure that you don't miss future videos. We need all the help we can get to overcome YouTube's algorithms, so please drop us a like and if you have any questions about the video, please leave us a comment and we'll happily answer them. This all helps new people discover our videos. Similarly, as I always say, please share the videos with friends. Tab owes many of our viewers to those who share the videos on social media, in forums, and with anyone who might be interested. Tab is an entirely viewer supported project, so if you'd like to support the channel further, check out the links in the description box below. And don't forget to follow us over on our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts. Right, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Next up is the Piat from Postscriptum. The Postscriptum Piat depiction does a good job of illustrating the time between the Piat firing with a nice mix of bang and metallic action noise before the explosion down range, although the explosion effect is a little bit over the top. The loading animation is quite good, but the details on the bomb are a little bit off. There are some blue and yellow markings on the bomb itself, suggesting it's a Mark III or a Mark IV, but there appears to be a visible primer at the base of the bomb. In reality, the Piat bomb's primer and propellant cartridge are up inside the bomb's tail tube. The Piat itself is rather dark green and also lacks the white aiming line painted along the top of the weapon. The base of the front sight assembly is also very thick. In reality, it was a thin sheet of metal. It also appears that the character is using the monopod as a foregrip canted off to the left, somewhat like a Bren gun carry handle. Again, there are also no markings on the rear sight, and the recoil looks to be a bit too light. So, 3.6 bombs out of 5 for this one, I think. Not great, not terrible. But wait, there's now a newer model. The colour of the Piat and the bomb are now more accurate, the texturing is more detailed, and the bomb has proper Mark III blue and yellow stripe markings. The white aiming line is still missing, but the sight assembly base is of the proper thickness, and the quadrant sight is actually now visible. The visible primer at the base of the bomb is also gone, but the loading clip is visible, which is a nice touch. The rear sight markings are now visible too, and the weapon's serial number is also just visible at the end of the outer casing tube. While the recoil is still a little light, the animations and firing sound effects are pretty good. So I'd say four Piat bombs out of five for this one. An honourable mention goes to the Iron Front mod for Armour 3, which has a very good work in progress model. Although it's lacking the webbing gator and the butt piece cover, it does have the white indirect fire aiming line, and the bomb markings and the model of the PI itself are quite good. The sound effects for loading and firing are good, the loading animation is limited slightly as it's a mod, 
and the rear sight is somewhat chunkier than the real thing, but the markings are correct. Thanks to Jez for this demo footage. With the webbing parts added, I'd say it would be a solid 4 out of 5 bombs. Another entry from 2018, the big budget Battlefield 5. A pretty low texture effort with the webbing gator looking like leather, and the entire Piat is forest green including the sights. The quadrant sight is missing and so are the rear sight markings. There's also no white aiming line along the top. The bomb is a weird lime green colour with a single yellow stripe. Not great. The loading animation isn't bad. The character tucks the Piat under his left arm. The firing sound effects and the resulting explosion aren't bad. I do like though that they included the Piat's spigot tube cork and chain that sort of flies around as the Piat moves, that's a nice touch. Uh, a very generous 3 Piat bombs out of 5 for this one. Lastly we have Days of War, a new game that came out earlier this year. The loading animation shows the character switch hands and slide the bomb into the tray. The model is the correct colour and nicely textured with some wear marks but does lack that white aiming line along the top, something that's pretty common with a lot of these models. The bomb itself is the right colour, with the correct blue and yellow markings visible. The rear sight has the three apertures of the later pattern rear sight, and the 50, 80 and 110 yard markings are also visible. The texture of the webbing gator around the rear of the Piat is also pretty good. The sound effect of the Piat firing is a good mix of bang and metallic action noises, and the recoil is pretty well represented. I'd give Days of War's Piat a generous 4 out of 5 Piat bombs. And if it had the white aiming line along the top, and a few other details, then maybe even 5. One thing that none of the games really include is the need to manually cock the Piat if it doesn't recock itself properly. Unsurprising that this isn't included, as the animation necessary and the in-game time it would take to recock it would be significant. Similarly, it would be nice to have an indirect fire element where you could use the Piat's aiming line and quadrant sight. And finally, none of the games that we've looked at allow the Piat to be reloaded by a number 2 as a crew serve weapon. But you can't have everything, and it's just nice to see uh, that the Piat is actually represented in games in the first place. So there we go guys, I hope you enjoyed this whistle-stop tour of the Piat in various video games. Some really great models, some not so great models, but it's really good to see the Piat being represented in games. Thanks again to Tigerfield for the use of some of the footage. He has a great channel that compiles and compares various portrayals of guns from various games over time. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.